welcome to our live stream end of day live stream uh today is the uh, 21st of july 2022 and uh, if you are going to watch this uh, if, or if you are watching this particular uh, video um, from our homepage, uh, then uh, probably i would advise you to just skip the first 30 minutes because in the second half of the 30 minutes you will have the technical analysis for um, all our genomic stocks the first 30 minutes is just going to be interaction with the community and uh, looking at all the uh, uh, happenings in the market, the news items, and uh, general discussions. So that's what we have in store for you. I'll wait for a few of our subscribers to join us uh, before going further. And uh, yeah, we are all set. Uh, now I'm going to uh, first quickly look at our uh, chat window and see what's happening out there. Just give me one minute. Uh, and we have a Discord together here. Hi, Discord together. Hi, Ben. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, INF might be a bit late today, but I think uh, we should, uh, yeah, today should be good. Tesla set the stage for us. So what I'm going to do uh, for uh, today's session is uh, I'm going to start looking at um, uh, at, uh, at the news articles that are showing the flavor of what's happening in the market. I want to start off first by uh, looking at the uh, article that I have here, which says NASDAQ gains boosted by Tesla shares and dollar decline. Uh, the USD index has definitely uh, declined. So this, uh, this article implies that whatever uh, results Tesla dis uh, declared yesterday has set the tone for the market. And um, uh, we are looking at... Um, positive outcome going forward, uh, especially because the ECB is also raising its interest rate. Uh, I have a separate article for ECB also. Uh, instead of 25 basis point, they increased their uh, interest rate by 50 basis point. If you recollect yesterday, uh, I had a news article which was speculating whether it could be uh, 25 basis point or 50. So with this increase, the ECB rate has now become 0%. Uh, so it is still very low and they may still have to increase the rates. Uh, they are in a very tough position at this point of time. And with the declining oil prices, I think it's uh, going to provide a bit of relief for uh, for the uh, EU. And with that said, initial jobless cl claims continued their upward trend and touched the highest level since, since November 2021. Uh, so this is also going to weigh in on the Fed if this does not get uh, absorbed by the labor shortage. Uh, so uh, another aspect which would uh, probably hint for a more dovish Fed and uh, that could again help the market. Uh, airlines definitely um, uh, did not do as great in the market, even though they uh, performed a bit well because of a bad law outlook. Uh, at and T dropped 7%, but it didn't make any dent on the market sentiment because today the markets are looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go on to the next item out here, which says Amazon to buy primary healthcare provider, one medical for roughly 3.9 billion. So you can see the funds are flowing into the healthcare sector, this uh, will definitely have a positive halo effect for our um, uh, genomic stocks as well as uh, biotech stocks. I'm just going to briefly look at the chat window and see what's happening out there. Let me uh, try to disengage this uh, chat window here. It doesn't allow me to go out. Okay. So, yeah. So let me go back to what I was talking about. And uh, we are here. Uh, Amazon to buy primary healthcare. So uh, that's um, that's done. Now let's look at jobless claim raising. Uh, we already spoken about this. Uh, initial claims total 251,000 for the week ended July 16, up 7,000 from the week before uh, and about 240,000 uh, Dow Jones estimate. This was the highest weekly level since mid-November and the Philly Fed uh, manufacturing index fell to a reading of minus 12.3 and produced the lowest employment reading since May 2021. And uh, yeah, we, we were in a good position with regard to unemployment and we had a tight labor market. So I'm thinking that there could be a potential mismatch between the required skills uh, and what is available. That is point number one. 
Point number two could be that uh, in the Canadian side, at least we have heard of companies uh, trying to um, uh, avoid expansion and trying to contain costs. Uh, so what they would be doing is reducing the number of employees and using more people to do the same number of work, a bit of shrinkflation and shelving any uh, growth plans. Uh, potentially, if that's happening in the US, then that could be the second factor that could hint at what is happening out here. Uh, definitely, this is all going to be a political hot potato. Uh, but on the positive side for us, the Fed is likely to go a little bit benign and that could help the stock market. The next uh, good news here is Amazon is starting to deliver packages with Rivian electric vans. It's good news uh, for me from a multiple perspective. Uh, first of all, uh, we need uh, to address the environment uh, because the climate change is definitely affecting people. People are migrating away from uh, flood prone areas, from uh, forest fire prone areas, from drought prone areas, and uh, they're all coming uh, towards the north of the United States, somewhere along Vermont and that coast. And uh, uh, given all those kind of things happening, it's uh, very difficult to pretend that climate change doesn't exist. Uh, at least uh, if uh, Amazon is using electric vans, a little bit of that pressure is taken off, even though it's like a drop in the ocean, but we'll take that. So that's point number one. Point number two is that this is proof that we can have uh, commercial carrier um, uh, vehicles uh, which are electric. So that's the second good thing that has happened. Uh, because if you have been hearing Peter Zehan, he was saying that uh, uh, EV uh, trucks uh, make sense in mountainous regions where there is no public transit and all. Uh, so this is something against that. Uh, maybe Amazon runs this for a couple of years and Peter is right and they decide to shelve it. We'll have to wait and see what happens like to just quickly go to the chat window and see what is the response from our viewers out here. Hi, Inf. Welcome. Vov made a decent uh, recovery. Yeah, yeah. Vov made decent recovery mainly uh, because they uh, they announced the uh, Vertex uh, collaboration. Uh, that gave them the uh, jump. And also earlier they had that um, uh, uh, base editing, Vov 101, uh, making two big newses. One is uh, being very close to FDA approval and second is being uh, the uh, uh, human trials which have started with the first patient in uh, New Zealand. So all that uh, together makes it uh, a very, very uh, suitable for Verb uh, to raise money at this point of time. But I think that if, we had, if they had raised the same number of stocks in a better time, they would have got much more money. Uh, but it's a good idea for them to uh, increase their uh, uh, cash runway. So I'm, I'm happy that they managed to do that. And the other good news for me from that perspective is also that uh, money is flowing into genomics. Uh, this is the second time that I have seen uh, funds being raised uh, in the uh, genomic sector. So I'm happy about that. So coming back to this uh, electric van thing, yeah, we have covered this topic. Next is the European Central Bank has um, increased uh, 50 basis point. This was a surprise for most of the participants there. They expected a 25 basis point hike. Uh, but this is essential for uh, uh, Europe. And they're also going to, uh, to uh, come up with the energy blockade from uh, Russia. And they're working hard towards it. They have announced a 15% cut uh, uh, request uh, to all the participants uh, who are using uh, energy uh, in Europe. And I bet that that's definitely going to um, uh, impact Tesla because the promises for next quarter by Tesla hinges on really good production at both Germany as well as uh, Texas and uh, China. If anything goes a bit amiss, then we are looking at a difficult quarter uh, after the results come in for Q3. Uh, so that's one aspect. At the same time, I believe that by Q3, we would have had the inflation uh, demonstrably shown that it has peaked and it's uh, declining. And if that is the case, that will counteract whatever Tesla does. And instead of the entire market being driven by Tesla, uh, the market would be driven more by uh, macro uh, issues rather than uh, micro company related issues. Uh, that's my opinion going forward. And next item here, this is really good. This kind of uh, makes makes me feel uh, vindicated a bit because it says gasoline prices may have peaked for the summer and could be headed below dollar four. And they are saying analysts say average prices may have peaked in June at uh, five per gallon and not likely to go back to that level unless there is a disruption in oil and refining operations or a spike in oil prices. So if we go and have a look uh, quickly at our... Um, uh, oil out here, U.S. oil. Uh, so this is this is exactly what we were talking about um, uh, yesterday, uh, and maybe for a few days. Uh, whenever I come to the oil chart, I always make a point to mention that. And today we have dropped further, and we just pierced through this uh, 
support line at 95.08 and came back again we have been bouncing off it one two three four times so far uh, the fifth time could be a charm because the macd is also becoming bearish and momentum has also fallen so expect oil oil prices to fall down further and uh, that's going to be a, a good thing overall for the inflation and therefore fed can cool off a little bit more uh, so that's what i would say to that and uh, with this said i'm going on to my next item which says uh, stock market news li live updates this is from yahoo they are saying tech stocks lead uh, stocks higher as earnings rush in ecb surprises with 0.5 uh, per percent uh, rate hike and uh, shares of amazon have pushed higher for a seventh straight day i have uh, holdings in amazon i'm really happy that it's going up uh, because it was in the red for a while the stock climbed 13 percent over the seven day period but remains down more than 25 percent year to date and then we are coming to um, what else do they have here of course the uh, ecb tesla tesla was in focus after reporting earnings following market close uh, wednesday that topped analyst estimates but said automotive gross margins fell from the previous quarter shares up roughly two percent before the bell and we know the rest of the story what happened uh, it's been uh, doing very well i'll just go quickly look at uh, tesla out here and if you look at the tesla share prices out here it's gone up 9.7 percent my friends on a base of uh, around 700 and uh, 700 base uh, this is a really really good jump because it uh, amounts around 72 dollars and if we look at the number of hurdles that it has crossed so i'm going to mark these as um, supports and this has also become a support now and if i was to go ahead and uh, put the exponential moving averages it's just being constrained by the 200 day exponential moving average at this point of time and we have the 9 day and the 20 day below it so it's looking beautiful it's getting stronger uh, it needs a way to go before it can be uh, in a, a very bullish path but right now it's on a mildly bullish path and uh, potentially it's going to pick up further uh, and with that said uh, let us look at Rivian if it has got any positives out here it's up 3.74 I think it's the effect of Tesla and also it's the effect of Amazon putting the uh, uh, vans into um, actual production and uh, also making an announcement of it. So those things uh, help. And also we should remember that uh, Amazon holds uh, Rivian shares. So that, uh, that makes a difference. Now, uh, next we are going to look at uh, the other, uh, other item I have here, which is the fear and greed index out here. Uh, we, we used to be in extreme fear, if you recollect, uh, quite a few uh, weeks ago. And then we migrated into the fear territory at the very bottom. Now we are coming very close to neutral. And when you look at our uh, VIX in context with this, you'll see how things fit together very nicely. If you look at VIX, it's coming closer. It's at 23.13. It has broken down below this resistance level out here, uh, which had given it support for quite a while. Uh, I'm going to just quickly mark all this as supports so that we have a clean chart here. And the moment we get into the 20 region, uh, that's when I think uh, we'll be having the fear and greed going into neutral. So that's where we can start doing our uh, day trading and uh, swing trading. And I would hope to have a lot of uh, day and swing trading ideas of mine, which I can share with you at that time. Of course, not as uh, financial advice, but as uh, my personal opinion. And you can do your own due diligence before you uh, make any investment in shares. Uh, with that said, I think uh, I would like to... Um, uh, go and have a look at the charts here let us go and uh, check out uh, what's happening with the indices so in the indicator i'm going to go to qqq it's looking good it's uh, straddling this uh, resistance at 306.53 it's at 306.68 so struggling out there just want to quickly come to the chat window and see uh, if anyone has any questions or ideas that you want to discover What happens if someone goes into a McDonald's and order a MACD? The cashier who used to be a crypto investor says, nice, aha, and gives some extra French fries. <laughs> you need a technical analysis on coin? Okay, let's do that. Let's do that, Coinbase. I, I have holdings on coin and um, uh, it's languishing. It's, uh, it's in deep red. It's almost 50% down from where I had. So I also would like to look at coin. Let me see. 
Okay, here we go. This will be interesting. And let's do a uh, overall. So if we come down all the way to 73.35, which is uh, today's price. So somewhere around 85% down, that's what it is from its peak. Uh, and that peak was in 2021. And if we were to look at the uh, peak for uh, this year, uh, then we are down. Please bear with me, it's very sensitive out here. We are down almost 80% from the peak for this year. That means the fall has been tremendous and all the energy is coiled up for it to move upward at the slightest opportunity. Uh, with that said, I think uh, I would like to draw some trend lines to begin this analysis. So the first trend line is going to come from here all the way down to here. And I'm going to mark this as red because this is the resistance. The second trend line I would like to draw uh, is going to connect the bottoms out here. And this is going to be uh, green. I'm going to adjust that. So in order to adjust it, I need it to look a little bigger out here. I'm going to pull this down and connect the lower lower lows so we have a good connection out here so having said that we are in a pennant formation at the bottom of a downward trend which doesn't generally end up uh, well but uh, it all depends on how the uh, market environments operate and this is an extraordinary situation for most of the market participants as you saw yesterday tesla even though it was in a bearish uh, tenet a pennant it uh, broke upwards because of uh, good results and the market sentiment same thing could happen for coinbase because uh, bitcoin is now being driven uh, more by nasdaq and other uh, cryptocurrencies are following bitcoin so everything it's like pied piper everything is going in the same direction so i'm expecting that we should break through over this now in terms of strength of this chart if we were to look at what had happened like we need to know what happened in order to know what is going to happen that's the reason why I'm going to draw some more trend lines here. Uh, this is going to be the upper resistance. Now, uh, Coinbase, in my opinion, has been trending between these two lines, consolidating sideways, and now it has risen up. It has been uh, on an upswing all the way from 13th of July. And uh, if you recollect, um, uh, I think around uh, 13th of July, let me think what I was going to say about this. I forgot the point that I wanted to make, but uh, coming back to what we have here uh, is that we have started moving upward from 13th of July and now we are at a very, very strong resistance out here. This resistance is the confluence of this diagonal red line, which has been a, a, a bare channel for us uh, all the way from uh, the peak at 10th of November 2021 uh, going down. And then uh, we have this horizontal minor resistance, which we have uh, not been able to break uh, in at least uh, one occasion out here so we have to consider this uh, but the good uh, aspect for coinbase is that we have got the 9 day 20 day and the 50 day exponential moving average providing support and the 50 day exponential moving average provided support yesterday as well so it's two days in a row that it has provided support uh, and we have a bullish macd and we have a momentum which is above average the only thing i'm concerned about right now is the fact that if you can see the um, i'm going to expand everything so that you can see the chart clearly if you're watching in a mobile or something, you see this line here for uh, the momentum. Uh, the, the momentum is uh, dipping a little bit. This is a bit of a concern for me. Uh, it's not good, but still we are above average in momentum. So I'm happy about that. So I think that uh, we are going to have a severe challenge and we'll have to make a decision. Coinbase will have to make a decision. Uh, and I think if uh, we do not challenge this uh, strong resistance today, it's for the good thing tomorrow if we do challenge we're going to break the strong resistance into two resistances and we would have the opportunity of cross one of them convert that into a support and wait the next day to cross the next one i suppose that's how it's going to happen uh, but there has been some bad news in coinbase i i heard uh, some senior executives have been prosecuted for insider trading uh, that's also going to weigh on the stock at this point of time uh, despite the fact that uh, bitcoin is giving it a bit of a uh, positive uh, and also we have elon musk uh, and uh, tesla announcing that they had sold a whole bunch of bitcoins that is kind of making bitcoin a bit weak right now even though it's as strong as it has been in the last uh, two weeks uh, 
23,000 for Bitcoin is uh, looking good considering where it has been. Uh, so those are the factors in there. Uh, so what do I think about Bitcoin uh, and uh, Coinbase going forward? Uh, I think Bitcoin is going to follow the cues from uh, Nasdaq. Once all this negative uh, news about the prosecution and uh, about uh, Tesla having sold uh, Bitcoin goes away. And I expect Elon Musk might maybe announce a couple of months down the line that they have bought back Bitcoin. Uh, we can't rule out surprises from Elon. All those things can push Bitcoin up. And also I spoke about why Bitcoin is a good um, uh, investment um, yesterday in my uh, uh, live stream. So overall, I think uh, Coinbase, it's going to be a difficult trek up. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, earlier uh, at the highs, Coinbase was uh, overpriced. Uh, so right now it's going to have a difficult journey upwards, but uh, it's coming. Uh, overall, I think the market has bottomed out and uh, same thing is applicable to uh, Coinbase. So that's what I would like to say. And let me go and check what your reaction is. My Harris stocks that I own just a little of each DNA, HYLN, NNDM. I have to check out HYLN and NNDM. I haven't seen that. Uh, then let us see what else is happening here. I got hood. That doesn't sound good. So uh, Discover Together, did you um, have any questions about uh, Coinbase? Um, I hope I have answered something for you. I'll come back and uh, check the chat later. Let me go back into, uh, into our TradingView platform. Uh, let's uh, quickly take a look at genomics, where they are. Just going to sort this out. PACB, man. Jesse, your company is doing great. <laughs> it's up 7.29, leader of the pack. And I am going to be very happy to mark this minor resistance as a support. It's looking pretty good today. PACB. Happy about that. Uh, who is in PG and D? Uh, yes, the bulls are back in town. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to the futures. We are almost close to the um, the market close. Uh, let's look at the futures. Futures are looking pretty healthy. Nasdaq futures are looking very healthy. So overall, I think uh, in you may be right. Uh, bulls are back. Uh, could this be a bull trap? I don't know. Uh, because if I was to go into uh, Nasdaq and then look at the Nasdaq chart, we are still within a, a bear channel. So uh, with regard to Nasdaq, because it fell more than anyone uh, any other index, Nasdaq is still under a, a bear channel. So it's a bull rally in a bear channel so we could call it a bear rally so we have to see uh, whether it's a bull trap that's my major fear uh, we seem to have crossed 306.53 which was a resistance for us i'll wait until market close before i convert this into a line of support we'll see what happens Bye, Inf. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jesse, you are selling calls on PACB to reduce your position. Makes sense. Makes sense. You can do that. Uh, but I wonder, um, yeah, today will be a good day for you to get a good call premium. So you should do that today. That's, that's a very smart thinking. 
yeah i also uh, think it could be a bull trap uh, because anything can go wrong you have the russia ukraine front you have the uh, china um, uh, covid lockdown and all that uh, buy in take care so those things are all going on so guys be careful it could be a, a bull trap and again uh, jesse uh, if you do sell calls uh, right now and this was a bull trap and if there was a reversal then I think you're going to make your money and keep your shares as well. So that will be a very, very smart move on your part, uh, I think. Uh, so I wish you the very best and uh, hope it all works out for you. Okay. Now uh, we are at uh, 3.56 p.m. So is there any other uh, uh, shares that you want me to uh, look at uh, before we go into the market close, which is going to happen in four minutes? Because I've looked at all my uh, news items and... Uh, I'm done with most of the stuff. Okay. There are no questions, so let me go in and get started with. So let us um, wait a few minutes and see what happens to the market. And uh, I know that one of us holds PACB. So I'm going to go into genomics and put PACB in on a one day ticker. Let us watch this ASMR. <laughs> let us watch what PACB is going to do. It's fluctuating nicely in a few cents range. It decided not to break down below the 200-day exponential moving average, which is that th thick red line that you see there. So that is good news. See, all exponential mo moving averages are pushing it up, saying, oh, don't go down, don't go down, keep on going up. Nine days trying valiantly. <laughs> Two minutes to go. Will the struggle last for two minutes or are we going to break down all those four exponential moving averages? Robinhood. Okay. Let's quickly look at Robinhood. Robinhood is definitely looking bullish. And uh, another thing I can see here, this is 21st of July 22. And this is 21st of July 22. This is a one day chart. Let me go into one year. Okay, Robinhood. I think Robinhood is consolidating sideways. Um, and it is still weak because uh, um, I think uh, it needs a little more volume uh, to help it out. Let us see what its historical volumes have been. Volumes are okay. Okay, let's take a closer look. I'm just going to push this out because the candles are so small. I don't know if you can see this in your uh, devices, but we have support from the 9, 20 and 50 day exponential moving average. So uh, in my opinion, uh, Hood is doing the same thing like Coinbase. Uh, both are uh, operating in the same manner. Um, I think the market has to become uh, much more uh, bullish and as the market continues recovering, these will recover gradually. And at the slightest bad news, these are likely to fall much harder. Uh, that's my opinion. And we have the earnings coming on 3rd August. So um, that, that could also determine what happens. If we get some catalyst at the earnings, uh, we will uh, definitely spike up but before earnings we can see a bit of volatility in this particular stock uh, things have happened uh, for uh, robin hood and um, there will be a bit of uncertainty about what to expect in the earnings whether the expectations can be met so the uh, earnings estimate is uh, minus uh, 0.32 uh, eps and the revenue estimate is 315.89 million uh, there were some dark pool regulations that were being debated in the house so i don't know what is the status of all those 
so have not been following uh, robin hood uh, too closely uh, but i'll do a bit of research and uh, next time we have a chat i'll be more knowledgeable on that with that said it's almost four o'clock uh, let's go and uh, look at where the market closed i'm first going to look at the futures this is a sequence in which i like to work uh, nasdaq futures are looking great it's still looking positive uh, up 1.28 percent that's good uh, the next thing i'm going to do is uh, go into indicators and uh, us oil has been down and it has uh, not been able to pierce the 200 day exponential moving average but definitely it's on a downward bearish track so i'm happy with that uh, qqq has managed to break through this uh, resistance of 306.53 it's another successful foundation being built and if you notice our upward legs in the last two ones were almost the uh, same size but this one is much larger that's also another positive news in my uh, opinion and you can see that the 9 day exponential moving average has cost, crossed over the 20 day exponential moving average that is the first level of uh, consolidation of a bullish uh, uh, leg and the second level would be uh, the 9 day crossing over the 50 day and the 50 day coming below the uh, 20 day so that's the sequence that we are uh, looking for and we are slowly working towards that so qqq is going up step by step also the macd is uh, bullish and the momentum is still really good above average and plenty of room before being overbought so qqq looks very strong for tomorrow s p 500 is up 1.03 uh, percent today and post market it's still up uh, 0 0.02 let us see what was the status with qqq qqq was also up 0 0.04 post market uh, s p 500 also 1.03 percent up post market and it has got uh, support out here horizontal support at 388.74 and also the nine day exponential moving average is giving support at the same level very strong support out there yeah, and also nine day exponential moving average has crossed over the 20 day another a strong foundation here 50 day exponential moving average is now giving support so that's excellent and uh, we are also seeing that uh, the macd is bullish and the momentum is above average everything is looking good here russell average has managed to uh, go past the uh, diagonal uh, line of resistance of the bearish channel yesterday and today it has uh, uh, reinforced uh, the bullish channel by staying above it and uh, we have closed above yesterday's uh, uh, closing so that's another positive in my opinion and again here we have got the nine day crossing over the 20 day really good stuff out there 50 day exponential moving average has become a support out here for the price so i'm really happy with uh, the way russell is moving uh, and if you were to look at the MACD, it is bullish and momentum also is um, still going up. And if you look at uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's up 0.53%. Uh, and post market, it's up 0.01%. Uh, and same story here 9 days crossed over the 20 day attempt to lay a foundation for a bull market. Looking good here. And we also have horizontal support at 312.49. Uh, and we have the 50 day exponential moving average giving us support. Since we crossed this diagonal line of resistance which formed the bear channel, we have had three uh, positive days. In all the three days, we have been increasingly closing at a higher and higher higher closing uh, uh, price. And therefore, Dow Jones Industrial Average also looks good. And if you look at VIX, VIX has come down and it's ended at 22.98 today. It's moving closer towards the 20 point. The moment it goes below 20, I'm going to be delighted. And as it approaches 20, we'll have opportunities for swing trade as well as uh, uh, day trading and i'll come up with some ideas for you at that time uh, put call ratio uh, has ended at uh, 0.943 it is a uh, mild uh, mildly uh, bullish uh, to neutral uh, i like this and if you look at xly by xlp we are uh, doing really well we are going more and more risk on which is really good for genomics as well as technology stocks us dollar index uh, has again come down below this diagonal line of support i'm going to leave it as a support at this point of time let us see tomorrow if it continues to consolidate sideways, uh, then I would turn this uh, into a line of resistance. Otherwise, we, we can still anticipate that tomorrow morning it may go there. But the chances are less because ECB has increased the interest rate. Uh, so there will be some fund movement out there. Now, let's look at our uh, genomics. Oh, before that, I would just like to quickly have a look at Tesla and see where it closed. Tesla closed up 9.78% friend on a base of 700. That's phenomenal. This is excellent. Those who are holding uh, Tesla, congratulations. You have made a lot of money. Now let's go to genomics. And congratulations to everyone who is holding PACB, except those uh, probably who are disappointed because they bought at a higher price. But those who have bought at lower price, definitely you are seeing a lot of gains today. 7.85% is really good gains. Uh, PACB is doing well. 
PSCB broke through our earlier minor resistance at uh, 4.52 and it has gone up. It's uh, closed at 4.81. Post uh, market, it is down minus 0.21%. But overall, I think it's uh, been stopped by the resistance at 5.14. And next resistance for it is the 50 day exponential moving average. If I was to magnify the candles out here and see, I can see that 9 day and the 20 day uh, exponential moving averages are giving support. The crossover has not yet happened, it seems. Uh, between 9 day and 20 day exponential moving average out here so there's a bit of weakness still to be uh, overcome once that happens i'll be much more confident about pacb with that said i'm going to look at imtx which is up 6.2 uh, percent and i can see that here is the support at 9.65 uh, which is a horizontal support and we are still uh, sitting above that yesterday also we opened high but came down and this support held today also we opened high came down this support held we went back up again and we are close the day at 10.28 and post market we are up 1.95 percent for imtx and it's looking good out here the macd is also bullish momentum is very close to being overbought so we have to be careful tomorrow because there could be a sideways moment uh, if um, we uh, go into the overbought area illumina is up 3.16 percent really happy for illumina out here and the 20 day exponential moving average is just about to cross over the nine day exponential moving average setting up a the first step of a bullish uh, chart and we have a uh, minor uh, support here at 196.27 which is continuing to hold along with the 9 and 20 day exponential moving average the 50 day exponential moving average sitting at 218.05 is uh, giving uh, the next level of resistance macd is bullish and momentum is above average and pointed straight up uh, all all go for uh, illumina for a bullish run in my opinion so let's hope for the best post market uh, there is no trades uh, Allogen, 2.13% uh, 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 increase today and it's uh, firmly above the 200 day exponential moving average. I'm loving this and if you look at the 9 day exponential moving average, 20 and 50 and 100, they're all uh, below the pricing here. And one good move out here is the 100 day exponential moving average is going below uh, the 50 day exponential moving average. So it's all looking good. The uh, ultimate uh, step for the uh, bull chart is going to be the 20 day uh, the 200 day exponential moving average uh, going below all of them so that still has to happen so we have got a good deal of bullishness in allogen uh, let me see if there is any recent news uh, june 23 was the last news nothing new out here so allogen is looking pretty good to me it's on a bullish channel macd is bullish we are on the overbought so i put a word of caution i think i mentioned that yesterday also being overbought means we may consolidate sideways. In case of some stocks, there will be continued upward movement um, being above, uh, above the uh, overbought status uh, when there is really uh, strong sentiment. So I think Allogen is in that kind of situation, but expect sideways movement tomorrow. Uh, SQZ, uh, this is something that I'm holding and watching, uh, has not done that great. It's up 1.94%. I'll take that. It's up $0.06. Cents. Uh, still, um, it's uh, consolidating sidewards. Uh, it has got earnings coming up on uh, 3rd of August. I've already published the uh, earnings estimates. If any of you want to have a look at it, you can go to the channel and uh, check it out. Uh, Novartis is up 1.98. I'm not going to talk about Novartis. Uh, I'm going to talk about ArcG. Uh, ArcG has broken above the uh, bullish pennant out here and it's gone up. And it's uh, today it's managed to cross the 100-day exponential moving average, which is really good for us. And also the MACD is bullish and we still have plenty of uh, momentum left to go before it becomes overbought. So I'm rooting for ARCG to do even better uh, going forward. It has a long way to recover. I don't see any gaps that need to be filled. Uh, but uh, the, the look, uh, everything is looking good for ARCG. Uh, DNA is up 1.27%. And I think Jesse, you sent me the video on uh, uh, DNA. Uh, it was really interesting. I didn't know so much details about uh, Jinko Bio Bioworks. But... Uh, it's good. Uh, the only con concern for me is that they need to have really strong uh, security measures uh, to make sure that a rogue employee or somebody doesn't uh, do something with the database and uh, with their uh, uh, code base. So with, with that said, I'm going to look at uh, Caribou Biosciences up 1.4%, uh, uh, really uh, looking strong in the charts. It has got a, a gap to be filled up and the gap uh, has been half filled today. So we have a doji candle out here, a bit of indecision towards uh, the end of the day, but still we have ended above yesterday's uh, high. So I'm really happy about that. And we can also see that the nine day exponential uh, moving average has crossed over both the 20 and the 50 day exponential moving average. So the bull foundation is being laid. This is the third grade. 
so it's looking good first second and third uh, and the next step for it is to get the 100 day exponential moving average below and then we would be in a much more stronger bull channel our next resistance is going to be this red line here horizontal red line at 8.25 macd is bullish momentum is also above average and still moving upward really happy for caribou biosciences post market no trades uh, teledoc has, has got a big gap to be filled and it has managed to close above yesterday's closing i'm happy about that and it has got support from the 9 20 and 50 day exponential moving average the 100 day exponential moving average is the next challenge and after that we have resistance at uh, 54.58 macd is bullish momentum is also above average and moving forward i think uh, teledoc is con going to continue to do well uh, invite i'm going to be working on uh, the earnings uh, estimate for Invite today and tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow I should be able to put the video out. They are reporting on 9th of August and at this point of time the chart is looking decent. I wouldn't say great, it is looking decent because it's consolidating around the bottom. We have the bottom of this channel uh, at 2.15 and the top of this channel at 4.04. It has been languishing closer to the bottom for almost a good portion of time all the way from 6th of June onwards. So it's high time it started to move upwards. Uh, but unfortunately for us, the MACD is looking weak and the momentum is also looking weak. Let me look at the news out here and see if there is anything new. Invite post uh, Q2 preliminary revenue. Yeah, that's the, the revenue uh, alert is what pushed it down. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, lying low for quite a while uh, until some positive catalyst comes. That's my opinion. Uh, Beam is up 0.84% on a very, very strong bullish channel. As you can see, 9-day has crossed over the 200-day exponential moving average. This is one more level up on consolidating a bull uh, channel. So uh, it's looking really great. All the exponential moving averages are now uh, moving into almost the proper order. We have got the 9-day, 20-day, 100-day and 50-day in the right sequence that we want it to be. We just need the 100-day to move below the 50 and the 200-day to move below the 100. And then it will be in a very, very good um, bullish channel. That's what we should be aiming for. MACD is bullish and momentum is absolutely overbought. That's the reason why we couldn't have much of gains here. It has to consolidate sideways so that uh, the momentum can cool off and we come back from the overbought status and move forward. So tomorrow we might see Beam giving up a little bit of gains or moving sideways. So be prepared for that. Uh, Pfizer, I'm going to avoid looking at Pfizer. Uh, IDNA is doing great. It's up 0.21. It's still on a bullish channel and the 9 day has crossed the 100 day exponential moving average that's another step in the right direction all the exponential moving averages are now moving back and reshuffling into the right locations so this gives me uh, enormous confidence that the entire genomic sector is moving lockstep and getting into a progressively bullish channel uh, i just hope nothing upsets the apple cart i'm going to skip over region run i'm going to go into intelia intelia is still up in a bullish channel uh, macd is bullish and momentum is also above average and moderating so tomorrow it will continue to move up. Hopefully it's been flat today and it closed at exactly where it uh, closed yesterday. Uh, Vertex, if you look at uh, Vertex, it's uh, uh, it's showing some amount of weakness, but still it's a very good stock. I don't want to talk too much about Vertex because we are focused more on genomic stocks and Vertex just buys these genomic stocks. Let's go to Bluebird. Uh, Bluebird has done um, just as much as yesterday. It's still within yesterday's range. It's being supported by the... 9 day exponential moving average constrained by the 200 uh, by the 100 day exponential moving average and this diagonal line of resistance uh, it's not looking great uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens because right now the chart doesn't show uh, anything positive for bluebird we, we should expect some amount of consolidation before it moves up uh, let's look at crispr therapeutics uh, which has broken down below this uh, diagonal line of support and it has been supported by the 9 day exponential moving average as well as our uh, horizontal line of support at uh, 79.51 it was a very very strong support here so i'm hoping that tomorrow we continue to stay above this line of support post market we are down minus 0 0.60 percent and uh, if we was to if i was to go and look at uh, the macd the macd is uh, bullish but tending towards the signal line and the momentum is falling but it is above average i'll still hold out hope for crispr for tomorrow it's a good company and uh, uh, I think it will probably consolidate and then start its move upward. That's my opinion at this point of time uh, because the chart is looking pretty healthy. Uh, Editas was down minus 2.07% and it has got resistance here at 18.20 uh, which we touched yesterday and came down. And today this candlestick pattern is 
uh, a bearish candlestick pattern roughly if you look at it from a japanese candlestick pattern perspective and MACD is uh, bullish but tending towards the signal line but momentum is above average and pointed up pointed down so i think that editas might lose a little bit tomorrow before gaining and if we look at verb uh, it had lost a little bit we already know the reason so i won't belabor it basically to summarize uh, uh, it's come out with uh, extra share issues uh, which is dragging it down and also it has announced the collaboration uh, with vertex uh, which gives it uh, money and therefore it is uh, moving up and the balance of those two plus and minus has resulted in what you see here today we opened uh, low and we were supported by this uh, line of support out here at 29.72 and also the 200 day exponential moving average at 29.44 therefore we pushed up and then we had a resistance at 33.69 uh, which pushed us down and this is where we have ended and uh, we also were overbought so that was another reason that why we had to fall uh, and the MACD is still very bullish tending towards the signal line I'm expecting that tomorrow we'll bounce off this support and continue our journey upwards because we are across the 200 day exponential moving average and our 20 day uh, uh, 9 day 20 day uh, and 50 day are in the right sequence and 100 day is also moving towards the right sequence so all said and done I'm very happy about this I'm going to quickly look at the chat window and uh, check with everyone and see uh, if there is any questions or else I'll uh, close the uh, session for today so uh, Jesse is saying discord together I'm hoping BTC crashes so I can buy back in I sold 25% of my holding hoping to get back in at a discount uh, Jesse I've also always had thoughts like that but then when uh, any share or any instrument crashes uh, you have second thoughts about buying it when it is crashing it's just basic human nature we need a lot of discipline in order to succeed so we have to make our own rules and stick to it and not allow uh, the market to change our opinion uh, so if you stick to a strategy and plan then it will definitely work for you that's my um, that's me sharing my uh, learning and I have my rules and I don't trade as much I'm watching things uh, move up and down but I'm not trading too much I'll only trade when I have absolute conviction I did a trade on SQZ after getting absolute conviction but it didn't work out so even after a lot of deliberations things don't work out well yeah below 19k seems uh, reasonable and for me I have set a target of 16 to uh, 13k and that's when I'll uh, dip my hand into Bitcoin I already have holdings of Bitcoin and um, I'm watching it cautiously hopefully we get a chance to make money it doesn't matter where you make money whether it's on Bitcoin or Algorand or or in CRISPR or whatever as long as we make money that's the fun in the game uh, so yeah it's uh, it's very uh, interesting it's a nice day so with that said uh, my friends do you have any any special question or anything that you want to talk to me about uh, we can take that up uh, if you want me to go back to any charts and if you have any questions I'm just waiting to watch you on the chat window and if I don't get anything then I would uh, probably close the uh, uh, close this session because I'm working on uh, the quarterly earnings and I'm also working on um, the top 10 genomic companies to uh, showcase each of those uh, sequencing companies uh, that I had um, uh, published earlier the top 10 so I've already done Oxford Nanopore I'm working on the next one uh, and also in terms of uh, earnings I'm going to be working on Invite right now so uh, that's um, I think I'm working on Thermo Fisher uh, to showcase it as a, a genomic sequencing company okay guys so we have six people in the show today thanks for all of you coming in <clears throat> my voice is getting a bit hoarse I'm not used to speaking uh, for such a long period of time in a stretch so I'm getting used to it next time I'll have some coffee uh, with me uh, so with that said uh, I think there is no more questions here no more uh, uh, discussions so I'm going to wind down the session going going gone <laughs> okay bye guys take care have a nice evening thanks for joining me bye for now